Hey everyone, welcome to Game Nights. Thank you to Wizards of the Coast for sponsoring the show. And big thanks to Card Kingdom. You know, if you use the affiliate link, cardkingdom.com slash command zone, when you purchase your magic sealed products, singles, playmats, deck boxes, really anything, if you use that affiliate link when you do it, you are directly supporting this show and making sure that the content keeps flowing. And as always, our heart goes out to our patrons at patreon.com slash command zone. That is the way to directly support the show. And this year, we are dedicated to bringing a ton of exclusive content and giving back to that community. So make sure you check that out at patreon.com slash command zone. And also make sure that you stick around to the end of this episode because as always, we're giving away a ton of stuff. You don't want to miss it. All right, let's get on to the game. Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Game Nights. This time we have a couple of our favorite guests returning. Hey guys, it's Mel. I'm really excited to be back here on Game Nights today. And one of the original cast members from the show. Hey guys, I'm Craig. It's been a long time, but happy to be back on Game Nights. Craig was on some of the original episodes of Game Nights and he caused quite the commotion when he brought Infect to the table. And I love seeing how everyone reacted, so we're really happy to have him back. Craig, are you playing any Infect in your deck today? Uh, a little bit. <laughs> On this show, everybody built their decks around one of the new multicolored legendary creatures from Rivals of Ixalan. So my deck is built around Azor, the Lawbringer. So the goal of my deck is to draw some cards. So I've got things like Ristic Study, Consecrated Sphinx, and I need to make sure that I get rid of everyone else's small creatures and make sure that I can dominate the skies with this Azor. My deck is built around Alenda, the Dusk Rose. Ultimately, I want to be taking advantage of creatures dying all over the battlefield, putting counters onto Alenda, and then sacking her at that opportune moment to create a million vampires, swing for the win. So my commander is Zakama, Primal Calamity. The goal of my deck is to just start using his three abilities, taking care of creatures, artifacts, enchantments, gaining life if I'm too low. Overall, this commander is super fun to build around, and I think a lot of people are going to be building Zakama. My deck today is Kumena. It's a Merfolk tribal deck. The goal of the deck is to generate a ton of value, use a lot of tapping and untapping shenanigans, and outvalue opponents and hopefully last to the long game, and then attack with some unblockable creatures and seal the deal. All right, I'm really excited to see how my deck plays. Let's shuffle up and play some Commander. Commander? What? What? We play Commander on this show? <laughs> All right, as usual, we have playmats from Rivals of Ixalan. I'm in dinosaur country over here. Me too. Yarr! I'm, <laughs> I'm in command zone country. Wait a second. <laughs> we only have three Rivals ones. So we realized something kind of weird, Craig. You've been on the show a lot, maybe as much as anybody has, but you've never been officially knighted. I haven't. That's a travesty, so we want Mel to go ahead and please do the honors. I understand you brought... A powerful three-mana artifact. Oh. A sort of fact. Hey! Oh. It's the Sword of Feast and Famine. Nice. Oh, hunting is sweet. <laughs> oh my goodness. So Craig Blanchett. Oh, arise, Sir Craig. Craig. So Craig, welcome to Game Nights. Thank you. Only one may stand. You guys ready? I'm going to play a Fluted Delta. I will crack it, and then I will play the Enclave Cryptologist. As far as first turns go, Enclave Cryptologist is one of the best ways to start out the game because it lets you use your mana early, efficiently, and then you start just drawing cards for free. Fast turn to you, Josh. All right, strap in everybody because I'm about to have one of those turn ones that you dream about. I'm gonna go Swamp, Soul Ring, or drop Signet. Oh. Ooh, it's gotten hot in here. Oh my god. <laughs> the good thing Josh only has four cards left in his hand. <laughs> so yeah, if anybody's counting, that's four mana on the table. Turn one. Not bad. I'm gonna play a fortified village tapped and pass turn. <laughs> Sucker. <laughs> how far behind can you feel on turn one? That's how far behind I feel. I will play my flooded strand mm -hmm. and I'm gonna go grab me an island. Okay, let's play Minamo, School at Watcher's Edge. Mm. This card can untap my commander because I'm going to be using a lot of tapping shenanigans in my deck as well as any other legendary permanents I have. Then I'll tap two and play Cryptolithrite. Cryptolithrite actually works really good with the level up mechanic because I can tap my Enclave Cryptologist for the mana it needs to level up. Now I have both things I need to get this game going, which is card draw and mana ramp. Okay, I'm going to play a Myriad Landscape. 
And then I'm gonna tap four, and I'm gonna play what? Vidalkin Orrery. This is one of my favorite cards in Commander, and getting it out very early is gonna allow me to be reactive for basically the entire game. So now for the rest of the game, Josh gets to do what he loves best, which is waiting to respond at the ideal moment because all of his cards have flash. And I will pass the turn. I'm gonna play a Wooded Foothills, crack it. I'll grab a Taiga with that. I'll play a Thornscape Familiar. I wanna get that ramp out because I wanna be able to play my dino as early as possible. Then I can use his extra abilities to start picking off other people's things. All right, I will play a Plains, tap both, and I will play Azoria Signet. Nice. So on flavor. It's Ramp City all around, look at this. It is. Uh, pass turn. Okay, I will play a Strip Mine. Ooh. You know what, I'm going to tap two mana, and then I'll tap the Enclave Cryptologist with Cryptolith right to level it up twice. So it's level two now? Level two, and I'll pass turn. I did this so I could start drawing cards as soon as possible. I'm facing no pressure on the board. And I'll pass turn. Cryptolith right, so good. Right, untap, draw, play an isolated chapel. There you pass that turn. Yep, because I have a Delcanori, I can just pass the turn. All right. So I'm gonna play a Rugged Prairie. I could have flashed this in, but I'll just play an Avon Mind Sensor now. I see Josh has Myriad Landscape, and I could Avon Mind Sensor later. That allows him to do something with six mana in his Orrery. So I think I'm gonna force an action from Josh here, so that way he has to activate that land. Otherwise, it's very likely that he won't get what he's looking for. In response to the Avon Mind Sensor, I'm gonna crack my Myriad Landscape while I can still search and go find two swamps. I don't like being forced to do things, but I kinda gotta get my value while I can. And then I move to attack step and Mel. That's one swole bug. Take two. Dang. I kind of attack Mel because I never met her before, so take two damage. That's the most great reason ever. <laughs> Pass turn. I shall play a Reliquary Tower, and I will play a Propaganda. Oh, Y'all nice. better prepare to pay up. Propaganda is gonna be awesome because it's one of those political tools where uh, it really disincentivizes people from wanting to attack you, and my hope is that they're gonna be like, hey, that, that costs some mana. Uh, I, I'm not gonna go there. We're playing with Craig, and he loves to turn his creature sideways, so when Mel puts a Propaganda Propaganda on the board, it essentially says, Craig, you can only attack two people now, and that's me and Josh. I don't like that. Also, I'm a token deck. Eventually, I want to attack with a lot of creatures, so I'm gonna have to deal with it at some point. Pass turn. All right, untap, let's draw. Oh my. Turn four, I missed my land drop, but fortunately, I have a way to draw cards. Let's tap two to level up my Cryptologist one more time, and I will tap it to draw a card. Oh, I'm having flashbacks of old Game Nights episodes. If I don't draw a land here, oh, I'm gonna tilt. I'm gonna tilt. And we'll play land for the turn. Oh, yes. Things are going well. And then I will tap one to play the Sensei's Divining Top. This card is always good in Commander, but it's even better in my deck because I have some awesome synergies to line up with it. Pass the turn. Untap, draw. Because of Vidalkin Ori, I'm gonna be doing a lot of this, which is nothing on my turn because I can do it whenever I want to during other people's turns, so pass the turn. I'm gonna play a Cradle. Oh gosh, this might be one of the best lands in the entire format. It also means we're gonna probably see the dinosaur a lot earlier than we otherwise would. I'm not real happy about it. So I'm gonna tap four to cast Solemn Simulcrum. This is fantastic because with my guy's cradle, next turn guaranteed I'll have enough mana to play Zakamo. It'd be great if Jimmy would use that strip mine on the guy's cradle and then maybe Zakamo won't come out next turn. I hope he does that. I declare attacks, one at Jim, one at Josh. I declare no blocks. Yep, no blocks, I take two. Dang. And I will pass turn. Untap, drop turn. I will play Sturmgeist. It's a 4-4. 4-4 flyer? Don't worry about it. It's fine. probably fine, yeah. So Sturmgeist is a card that gets bigger and bigger the more cards that I have in my hand. And I've got Reliquary Tower out that says my hand can be as big as it wants to be. Mel's deck is all about drawing cards, so that thing could become huge. Uh, pass the turn. Okay, at the end of your turn, I will activate my top. Okay, I'll organize like that. And then, untap, I'll drop a turn, and I'll play Harold's Horn. Naming Merfolk. 
This card is really good in my deck because I already have the top out, which means I can manipulate the top of my library to give me a much better chance at drawing a Merfolk every single turn. Jim seems to be setting up some sort of value engine that isn't there yet, but is starting to make me a little bit concerned. I will tap two mana and cast Kumena, a Tyrant of Araska. Nice. So when I was checking out a lot of these commanders, a lot of them are based around tribal themes, and tribal cards get worse and worse the more types of those cards come out. So I'm watching Jimmy. He's got Sensei's Divining Top along with Herald's Horn, so he can keep looking for more and more Merfolk. And I'm wondering how many more there are going to be and how bad this is going to get. And then I will pass the turn. On your end step, I'm going to tap five and play an Ogre Slumlord. So this is going to be really key to the strategy of my deck, which wants to take advantage of creatures all over the board dying and generating value from that. Death Touch is something that kind of messes with my board a little bit. It really makes it so that I can't attack him because my stuff doesn't have double strike. It's just big. Awesome, awesome card. Then I will untap and I will draw, play a Swamp. Yep, pass turn. So here we go. The huge dinosaur is going to come out. I just really hope that Craig doesn't look in my direction. Now, the turn I've been waiting for. Oh my gosh. Oh, I've got enough. He's coming out, bro. Oh no. <laughs> oh, this is yeah, so scary. Me this turn. That's all I care. Everyone's sitting there counting up how many lands Craig has and how much mana he can generate, and that is terrifying, but also exciting because I love dinosaurs. When this thing comes out, stuff's gonna get real, and I'm a little bit scared. So I'm gonna tap out to bring in Zakama. Look how much text there is on this guy. He, he does kill, everything. He can kill almost every creature. Craig just gained some life. Yeah, right? Come on! My goodness. He just basically cast it for free? He also has a Gaia's Cradle on the board, so he's gaining mana out of this transaction. So that means then I could have a follow-up play. I'm going to play Audric, Lunark Marshal. Oh no. Oh no. So now every single one of Craig's creatures is gonna have Vigilance, Reach, Trample, and Flying. Ha. Huh. That's bad. Then, yeah, the destroy artifacts and enchantment stuff, right? So now the fun starts. There's a lot of targets on the board. I'm pretty sure I know which one he's gonna go after. So, activate Zakama's ability. I'm gonna destroy propaganda. And I have enough mana to blow up one more thing, and the next most important target. Look the other way, Craig, please. Please? Come on, man. My stuff's not very scary. What can it do? You don't have to kill my stuff. I'm gonna use this ability a second time, and I'm gonna destroy the Vidalcan Orrery. <laughs> Okay, I get it. It was a scary card for Craig, but it's gonna cost him. In response, I'm gonna tap six, including two white. And I'm gonna play Austere Command. Oh no. I'm gonna destroy all creatures with CMC three or less or four or greater, so all creatures. I'm so torn. This this Sturm guys had such big plans. Ooh, okay. I'm kinda glad this happened. I'm kinda sad I just cast my commander, but I'm more glad that this happened. Right. In response, I will activate my Enclave Cryptologist to draw a card. Then it resolves. Resolves. So in response, he blows up all my creatures. Oh, I blew up everybody else's too. <laughs> and that's gonna trigger Ogre Slumlord six times because six creatures died, and I'll make six rat tokens. Okay, um, oh geez. It's not the best, I rather would have held that Wrath for later, but it's not the worst either. I do have a decent board position still left with the rats and something to build upon and further my main strategy. And I'll draw off my Solemn and pass turn. All right, I will tap a Plains and play Land Tax. Land Tax is just like one of the most solid cards that you can play in Commander. It's only one mana, it nets you tons of lands. So yeah, that's all I got for right now. Pass the turn. All right, I will untap. On my upkeep, I'm going to activate the top. Okay, uh, I will organize the top like that. Harold Horn is gonna trigger, and I'm gonna reveal the top card of my library. It's Thadadel, Inquisitor. It's a merfolk, and I'm gonna put it into my hand. That's a pretty good little combo. And then I will draw my card for the turn. Sweet, this is exactly what my deck wants to do. Generate a ton of value and find some really high power level creatures. Okay, I am going to just cast Kodama's Reach. And I will find a forest onto the battlefield and a forest into my hand. All in all, I'm feeling great. The things that really worried me in this game were flyers and huge creatures that I couldn't deal with. And that single board wipe took care of all of that. And then I'll pass the turn. Okay. I will untap, draw. So now that I've lost the Ori, I have to play things at sorcery speed. It feels bad. I'm in top four. I'm gonna bring out Elenda, the Dusk Rose. 
Something interesting about this commander is if you want the second ability to trigger where she makes vampire tokens, you actually have to let her go to the graveyard rather than the command zone. So it's a tough decision when to do that because once Alanda's in the graveyard, she's a lot harder to get back out. Go to combat. And of course, I have to send a message. Craig, you blow up my stuff. You're going to take as much damage as I can give you. Craig, six at you. No, yeah, okay. I can't block it, so I'm going to take six. Oh, I knew I was getting attacked at that point. I, kn <laughs> I knew what I had done. And then second main, I'm gonna tap three and play Astronaut's Altar. Free sacrifice outlets are so powerful in the format. Specifically, they're very good with my commander. I'm pretty well set up here for an explosive turn coming up. All right, I will cast Sky Shard Point. So I'm gonna grab Stomping Ground and Savannah. I'm just trying to get back into Zakama as soon as possible. And pass turn. So uh, I'm gonna untap, and since Craig so generously got himself some lands, land tax is gonna trigger. So I'm gonna put three basics into my hand. So if there's one thing that Blue and White loves to do, it's waste time and draw cards. And I'm definitely gonna draw some cards here. I reveal an island, an island, uh, and a plains. And I will put those into my hand. Uh, and I will draw for turn. And then I'm gonna tap six, and I'm gonna play Consecrated Fakes. Oh. Oh. So this is one of those cards where if you don't get rid of it pretty fast, you're just gonna lose that game and you're gonna get buried in card advantage. At the year end step, I'm going to activate the top. Okay, I'll put them back on like that. And untap. Upkeep, Herald Torn is gonna trigger. I'm going to reveal Empress Galena, who is in fact a Merfolk, and then I will put her into my hands. I will draw for turn. And I will trigger Consecrated Sphinx and draw two. So jealous. All right, let's go ahead and play Thada Adele, and then I will play Empress Galena. This card says Legendary Permanent. That means I can steal Craig's Gaia's Cradle. It doesn't even have to be a creature. Plus, with Galena out, Craig has to be a little hesitant about playing his commander because I can steal it, even if he targets it with damage. It might seem like this is a scary card because Jimmy might be able to steal my commander, but with Ashnod's Altar out, he really can't. I can always just sacrifice it in response. So I'm not really worried about Galena. And pass turn. I'll untap. I will draw a card. <laughs> Oh gosh. And I will draw cards as well. Oh yeah, you will. So the one thing that's better than just drawing cards on your turn is drawing cards on other people's turns. I know what I have to do here. That Consecrated Sphinx just has to get off the table as soon as possible. All right, I'm gonna start by playing Fleshbag Marauder. Oh, come on. This card is an awesome answer to Mel's Consecrated Sphinx and I couldn't be happier. I do lose a creature in the process, but honestly, to get that thing off the board, I'd pay a steeper price. So I will sack a rat. I will sack Thada Adele. And I will sacrifice my Consecrated Sphinx. <laughs> So I kind of knew that Consecrated Sphinx is one of those where it hits the table and it instantly draws immediate hate. So I didn't expect it to stay around for a while, but I'm still real sad about it. And uh, that's gonna trigger Olinda three times. So she gets three oh. counters. So it also is advancing my main game plan putting counters onto Alenda so I can eventually get a bunch of tokens on the board. Okay, I'm gonna go to combat. And Craig, I'm gonna come at you with Alenda and four rats. Okay, no blocks. So that's eight. And four of that is commander damage because it's from Alenda. And then because of lifelink, I'll gain four. Going to 42. And then I'm gonna play Cathar's Crusade. This is the reason I was really upset to lose my Vidalcan Ori. This is the kind of card that I would like to sneak out on the end step before my turn, before people have a chance to react to it. Playing it at sorcery speed is scary, and I just hope that nobody's really paying attention. Cathar's Crusade, this is a card that you always have to worry about in Commander because it's really explosive, and if you're not careful, it could just end the game. And I will pass the turn. All right. So I'm gonna play Vizier of the Menagerie. I guess it's it's kind of card draw for me based on if I have a creature at the top of my library, which is why I put it in. And I'm gonna look at the top card of my library. But top card of my library is a land, so doesn't do much for me right now. And then I'm gonna play Celestina Signa. It seems as if Craig's been really set back by that board wipe that I played earlier. He really hasn't done anything for a couple of turns, so I don't want to take my eyes off him, but it's it's nice that he's not really doing anything super scary right now. And I passed turn. Uh, so during my upkeep, land tax is gonna trigger, and I'm gonna grab a planes, a planes, and an island. So you've drawn six cards off land tax, four cards off Consecrated Sphinx. And Look at that hand. Reliquary Tower. Jeez, Reliquary Tower. good. Man, so there's some problems out here on the board. Galena's messing me up because she can take any legend. Josh has got a million things over there on his board, but I've really got nothing. So at this point, let's just clean everything up. Tap four. What's okay, a four nice. mana spell? Yeah, with white in one it? Wrath God. Wrath God. 
Oh, Wrath of God. I do lose one of my best creatures in my deck, but I'm also staring down a ton of tokens from Josh and his commander, so it's not so bad, honestly. I'm fine with that. That's cool. I lose one creature. I don't really care. So my board's kind of the biggest at the moment, and it would seem as if Wrath of God is bad, except... Okay, hang on. I have some responses. I will sack all my rats and the Fleshbag Marauder to Ashnod's Altar, and I will put five, six counters onto Alinda. So, okay, uh, she's a 10-10. Okay. Then Wrath of God... Resolves. Resolves. So I'm gonna let Alinda go to the graveyard. What I don't think of is what Josh has on the board. When she dies, that's gonna create 10 vampire tokens. Oh, geez. And then, when they enter, Cathar's Crusade will trigger, so each of them's gonna get 10 plus one plus one counters. So now I've got 10 11 11s. Oh, no. That's 110 power? Oh my goodness. Uh, I'm dead. I have zero creatures. I pissed him off earlier. I'm dead. Oh, oh my god. What have I done? I'm dead. I'm dead. Um, so luckily I have one thing that can at least keep me around for one more turn. Uh, I'm gonna put out my insurance policy. Crawl space. Well, that's a pretty good follow-up play. At the very least, she's not gonna die from my tokens crashing in, but Jimmy and Craig are, they're in real trouble. Pass my turn. Untap. Herald is gonna trigger. I will not reveal a card, and I will draw for turn. All right, I will play a land. When you're in green-blue, you don't have too many ways to interact with the entire board, especially at instant speed, but there is one way that I know of, and Josh knows it too. Eight, four, five, six, seven, eight mana. Don't look at that. Don't look at that. So I can't risk tapping any mana right now. Pass turn. Hmm. So Jimmy has left up a very specific amount of mana. Coincidentally, maybe the amount of mana that you would need to cast him, I don't know, Cyclonic Rift? Jimmy would make this play whether he has Cyclonic Rift or not, because if he's gonna die to the tokens and he doesn't have an answer to it, he may as well leave up the threat of the answer to it because he knows I'm gonna see that he might have that card, in which case I might be deterred from attacking him. The real question is, does Jimmy have Cyclonic Rift? Kill some people or risk losing it all? Yeah, that's the thing, it's like, well... Josh has a really interesting decision here. So I can attack and get rid of Craig. He's tapped out, he can't do anything about it. Mel, I can hit her for a lot. She's tapped out with crawl space. The question is, do I send the rest of the creatures at Jimmy? So if Josh doesn't attack Jimmy, he's not gonna force Jimmy to use whatever effect he's got to get rid of all this stuff. If he does have Cyclonic Rift, then all my attacks are null. Because he can't just point it at the creatures attacking him, he would basically bounce all the creatures, in which case I do no damage to anyone. Uh, it's pretty tough. I'm hoping on two miracles here. I'm hoping that Josh attacks Jimmy, and I'm hoping that Jimmy has Cyclonic Rift. The likelihood of this is not very good. All right, we'll go to combat. Whoa, 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 hang on. Before you attack Josh, I want to know, what would you, the audience member, do in this situation? Go and leave a comment in the comment section below. I want to see if you're right or not. Yeah. Would you attack Jimmy? Would you just go after Mel or Craig? It is, it's a head scratcher. It's a tough one. It is a tough one. While we have you here, I want to give another shout out to cardkingdom.com slash command zone. Again, if you use that affiliate link when you order your magic product, you're really helping game nights to stay on the air and the content to keep flowing. And of course, a big thank you to Ultra Pro, who's the other sponsor of the show. You know, Ultra Pro makes these awesome playmats for every single set of Magic the Gathering. If you go to any LGS in the world, you should be able to buy some Ultra Pro products and you're also supporting the show. And hey, who doesn't want to rock it out with a three-headed Sakama? Yeah, this Sakama playmat is really sweet. I want one. Of course, we're giving this one away at the end of the episode, so stick around for that. Oh, and also, I'm, I'm very curious, were you correct or not? Did you make the right prediction? What do you think is the right play? Can't wait to see your answers. I feel like I'm stalling because I'm still trying to decide right now who I should attack. Yeah, we'll find out what happens. All right, let's get back to the game. All right, we'll go to combat. I'm really, really hoping that Josh only attacks Mel and Craig and leaves me be. Mel, two at you. Come on, Josh, come on. Why just attack two when you could have all three of us? Craig. Three at you. Come on, Josh, attack everybody. Go get Jimmy, go get Jimmy. Jimmy, are you sure? Let's say I'm 90% sure Jimmy has Cyclonic Rift. That still gives me a 10% chance to basically win the game right now. If he does have it, I'm not sure I can beat it anyway, so I decided to just go for it. Yeah, Jimmy, that leaves five coming at you. Yes. 
now it's just up to Jim if he has it. Does he have it? Does he have it? I mean, I, I think he probably has it, but there's a chance he doesn't have it. Oh, I was really hoping he wouldn't attack me. Uh, in response, I'm gonna top. Spin the top? Are you serious? Does he not have it? We're probably dead. We're probably dead. I will order it like this. Oh, come on, be bluffing, be bluffing, be bluffing. He could totally be bluffing. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> he wasn't bluffing. Of course I had it. It's your boy. He always has it. Of course, of course he had it. I didn't doubt it for a second. I knew he had it. Okay, so Clank Rift resolves. Everything goes to your hand. It feels bad, but I don't regret the decision because he had it no matter what. So he's either gonna cast it now or on the instep before his turn. All right, I'm gonna play Soul Ring. I'm gonna play the Signet back out. I'm gonna tap five and I'm gonna play Cathar's Crusade. Another good thing about forcing Jim to use that now is I'm actually able to replay some of my cards out on my turn. Whereas if he does on the end step, then I wouldn't be able to sort of rebuild my board a little bit immediately. All right, untap, draw, and then I'll play a Celestia Signet. And then I'm gonna play Aurelia, the war leader, which has haste and allows me to have two attack steps. The fact that she can start over an entire extra attack sequence just makes anything that Craig can put out on the board way scarier. And then I declare attacks, Mel. Oh, my face. Second attack, I attack you again. Ow! All right, I take six. And I pass turn. So at this point, nobody else really has a board state. I'm actually feeling pretty good. All right, untap. Now that Galena's gone, I can play the card that I've been waiting to play. I will play Kefnet the Mindful. And I definitely have more than seven cards in my hand. Yep. <laughs> Since I had land tax out, my hand's just been growing and growing. Uh, yeah, how many cards do you have? Just, you know, I'm curious. Uh, one, two, three, four, nine, 10, 11, 12 cards in 12. hand. 12. It's not Yeesh. bad. And I'm going to tap five and cast Sigil of the Empty Throne. So now I've got an awesome blocker in Kefnet. I've got the first part of my big engine for making angels set up, and I've got a couple of enchantments in my hand. I'm feeling really good. Pass turn. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna untap. Herald Torn is gonna trigger. I will reveal the top card of my library. It's Surge Spanner. Put it into my hand, and then I'll draw for the turn. I'll play land, and then I'll play Life Trapper's Bestiary. This card is another value engine for me because it helps manipulate the top of my deck for Herald Torn, and it also just lets me draw more cards and is the kind of thing that really gets a deck going in the mid to late game. And then I will play Surge Spanner. Yes! I have Cryptolith right out. I can tap the Surge Spanner for the mana to use its ability and then start bouncing permanents. That's right, not non-land permanents, just straight permanents. I'm going to trigger Life Crafter's Bestiary and tap a green to draw a card. And then I'll pass turn. Uh, I untap. Draw. See, I can draw cards too. Look nice, that. nice. One card a turn. <laughs> Fair magic. I'll play Ashnod's Altar. I'm still not drawing anything here. What I really need is something that's going to draw me more cards. I'm just kind of out of gas and I'm just crossing my fingers, living off the top of my deck and hoping that I can get back into this thing. Go ahead. Untap. Draw. Okay. Warren Clux? Oh my god! <laughs> in my deck basically turns my general into a super general because now all my lands tap for double. So now I can blow up twice as much stuff, plus the oppression on my opponents. It gets pretty bonkers. Why are you playing that card? <laughs> you don't mess with another person's lands. Those are those are sacred. That's such a jerk card for jerks. I mean like who who doesn't let other people play magic and like untap their lands? Okay, I mean that's just like common courtesy, man. Okay. Like, like, let me play Magic the Gathering. All right, okay, can we move on to the next uh, uh, turn? Who puts that in their deck? <laughs> All right, then I'm gonna put out a Somberwald Sage. So next turn, I'm gonna be able to activate Zakama as much as I want. I'm gonna blow up everything. Declare attacks. Jack I can still dies. defend myself. I'm just warning you. All right, Jim. <laughs> Jim, three of you. Okay, I'll take three in the air. Second attack, I attack you again. Okay, I'll take three more damage. And then I pass turn. All right. Um, oh, this is terrible. I have a handful of a ton of really awesome stuff, but because Vorinclax is here, I can't cast a bunch of them because I, I want to keep things up for the next turn. Oh, this, this card is just the actual worst. All right, I'm going to play Land Tax. And so that's going to trigger Sigil of the Empty Throne. I'm going to get myself a 4-4 Flying Angel token. Now these are those sweet tokens from Unstable that have the full art on the other side. Nice. And then I'm going to play everybody's favorite. It's Rustic Study. Oh, okay. Oh, man. 
So Rhystic Study is gonna be extra good in this instance because of Vorin Clax. Both Josh and Jimmy are not gonna to wanna to tap that extra mana, so they're gonna be more than willing to give me this extra card, I'm hoping. That's gonna trigger a Sigil of the Empty Throne again, and I'm going to get another angel token. So this is what I was worried about. That's two enchantments, two angels. It feels like Mel is starting to take command of the game here. All right, I'm gonna put these lands to the side because Vorin Clax is not gonna let them untap next turn. I wanna leave mana up, so that's all I'm gonna do, pass turn. Craig, at the end of your turn, I'm going to activate Strip Mine and blow up your guy's cradle. This is good for me if I'm ever gonna come back in this game. I need the other players to kind of whittle each other down while I slowly climb my way back up. In my upkeep, I'm gonna activate the top. So for a clutch, that one on top? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Both of these are gonna trigger, Lifecrafters Beast Theory and Herald Horn. I will scry first, I will bottom, and then I will Herald Horn, but not reveal, and then I will draw my card for the turn. I look over at Josh, knowing that he has the most answers of all of us in his deck, and I ask him, So Josh, what can you kill? I can kill one thing. Born Clex has this effect, right, where your opponents start talking with each other, making deals, trying to get it off the table, and Jimmy and I are kind of making a deal for who's gonna get rid of what. Okay, if I do it, you're gonna get rid of the Sage? Is that the deal? What are you getting rid yeah, of? Yeah, I can get rid of both things. I think Clear Craig's board now. The two of them are chatting amongst themselves, and it, it sounds like they've definitely got a plan going on. I'm really excited about this. Uh, in that case, I'll pass turn. All right, I'm going to Shriek Ma Evoked. Target Born yes. Clex. Josh has just done us all a solid and killed probably one of my most hated cards of all time. Thanks, man. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> <laughs> and for stick study trigger, I will pay the one extra. And then Shriek Ma gets sacrificed. Okay, Jimmy. Okay, are you passing turn? Yeah, and then uh, I go to my end step. On your end step, I'm going to tap Surge Spanner for blue. That's gonna activate its ability. So I'll use that one blue and one colorless to bounce Sombra Wall Sage to your hand. This is the power of that Surge Spanner because Craig's basically set back an entire turn before he can cast a comma, and I'm happy to see that. All right, first I'm gonna declare attacks. Josh, three. No blocks, I take three. Second attack, I attack you again. Take three. All right, then I'm gonna put out Willow Seder, which I'm kind of excited about because it just stops anybody from playing their commanders. But overall, the only thing right now I can take is Kefnet the Mindful, which does nothing for me. I have one card in hand. And I will pay for Rhystic Study. Then I'm gonna tap three more and play out my Somberwald Sage again. At this point, my biggest problem is I don't have enough cards, and so there aren't that many options. I'm not in a great spot. Pass turn. All right, I'm gonna be sad because I can't untap these lands, and land tax doesn't even trigger. I'm just gonna draw a card as normal. Um, and then I'm gonna go to combat, and I'm going to swing at Craig uh, with these two angels. Ugh, I'm not gonna block. I'll take eight. Great. Now I will cast Azorius Signet, and then I'll cast Crawl Space. So I've got eight power worth of angels on the board. I've got an indestructible flyer. I'm still at a pretty decent life total. And I have a counter spell in my hand so I can make sure to protect my position. I feel pretty good. Pass my turn. At the end of your turn, I'll activate top. And then I'll untap the lands not affected by Boron Clex. Lifecrafter's Bestiary will trigger. I will scry a card to the bottom. And then Harold Torn is gonna trigger and I'm gonna reveal Kiora's Follower. And I'll put that in my hand. And then I will draw for the turn. This is that cadence that we know when players go into the like, I do this and then do that and then do this other thing and do that. Anytime your opponent's doing that, that's bad. You're probably losing and I feel like I'm losing. All right, I'm gonna tap one for a Mana Vault. Uh, not pay for Rhystic Study, so go ahead and draw. Yes. That's what I like to hear. Is that the first card drawn up for six Maybe. I will tap four mana for a Path of Discovery. Hey, That's cool. Right. This is a new card from Rivals of Ixalan, and I'm really excited about it because now with the top, I can start exploring every single turn and choosing whether or not I want to put a plus one, plus one counter on them or if I want to draw a land. So my deck is pretty much at full speed now with this card out. You gonna Rhystic Study? I will pay for the Rhystic Study. And then I'm going to tap two to play Kiora's Follower. I will not pay for Rhystic Study. Yeah. And some things are gonna trigger. He's just able to generate so much card advantage and little incremental value from every play that he does seems to domino into other plays. I'll tap the search banner for green to activate Lifecrafter's Bestiary. I draw a card, then I'll use a mana to top. Then the explore trigger will happen. I will reveal Tempt with Discovery with Path of Discovery. 
I'll put that in the graveyard, and then I'll put a plus one plus one counter on the Kyora's follower. Everything is working out for me right now. Unless people can take care of all my artifacts and enchantments, I feel like I'm moving into a very strong winning position in this game. And then I will pass the turn. It's either Jimmy or Mel that are in the lead here. Mel's got a bunch of angels she can maybe create. Jimmy's got a bunch of like crazy synergy stuff that he's doing. I don't know who's winning, but I just know it's not me. But I just drew a card that can maybe even the playing field. I'm really hoping this works out. All right, I'm going to pay five for stick study trigger. I will pay the one extra. And I'm gonna play Tragic Arrogance. Oh, speaking of artifact and enchantment board wipes, this is so bad for me because Josh gets to choose what I keep. Everybody else is gonna get way more affected than me right now. I'm on board with this play. Oh, whoa, whoa, no. whoa, 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 whoa. This is exactly the occasion that I saved up this counter spell for. Remember? <laughs> Remember how you were like, oh man, everyone's drawing cards. I would love to draw cards. You know what, buddy? I want you to draw a card too. Arcane, Arcane denial. denial. Oh no, no, it gets countered. I was painting so much hopes on that card resolving, and now, uh, I don't know. Yes, Smell! Oh, you are my champion. Thank you so much. I'm pretty happy with this outcome. I'm pretty likely to untap with my board intact. I'm in a great position. Like, this might be the, the best position I've been in all game. It would have been nice if that resolved. But the upside is Mel's tapped out now. All right, so untap. Okay, and then that's gonna trigger, so we're gonna draw cards, Mel. Then my draw step, I'm gonna draw a card. All right, so who wants to make deals? I can kill somebody. Not it. Not it. Does that count as a deal? What, no. <laughs> uh, I don't want to be attacked listen, for two turns. Listen, I'm, here's the deal I'm gonna make you. It's stupid for you to use an I can kill somebody right now on me. If you kill me instead of one of them, then you, that's up to you, go ahead. It's a good More point. More power to you. I'm not as scary. And Mel? Uh, I'm just here to draw some cards, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I am going to tap Willow Seder to target Kefnet the Mindful. So I knew all this time that Kefnet was a pretty likely target. I've been expecting this. So now she has no blockers. And then I'm gonna cast Triumph of the Hordes. Nope. Giving all my creatures plus one, plus one, Infect and Trample. <laughs> and she has no blockers, and I have two attack steps. Infect? Are you serious? This is one of those cards where it doesn't even matter that I have 31 life. Ah. All right, I see you moving those cards in my direction. So. I'm really sad about it. So, Swing yeah. at you for five, oh Infect. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, this is hideous. I take five Infect damage. Then I'll go to my second combat phase, and I will attack again for five more Infect. Uh, Mel, this is our friend Craig. This is what happens when you play Commander with Craig. Sometimes he just kills you with the infect out of nowhere. Probably should have warned Mel about that earlier though. <laughs> what what a way to go. <laughs> <laughs> and then second main, I will cast Aggravated Assault. So with my commander and a few other cards that I have in the deck, Aggravated Assault allows me, after I untap all those lands, to tap them again to take extra attack steps. It can get pretty broken. All right, I'll untap. On my upkeep, I will tap one green to activate Sensei's Divining Top. I will order it like this. Uh, Lifecrafter's Bestiary and Herald Torn will both trigger. I will scribe with Lifecrafter's Bestiary, keep it on top, and then I will reveal Mirror Regery with Herald Horn. That's good put it into my hand. And on my draw step, I will choose not to untap Mana Vault, and I will take a damage. I'll draw a card. All right, my value engine is pretty much entirely set up. I'm going to tap Surge Spanner for blue with Cryptolith Right. That's gonna activate its ability. And then I'll tap an additional land to bounce Somber Wall Sage back to your hand. With Surge Spanner, I can keep all of Craig's permanents off the board. I need everything to stay just the way it is. And fortunately for me, I have a card that's gonna make that happen. And then I will play Glenelendra Archmage. And that's going to trigger the Path of Discovery. Ooh, this is a great combo. So with the Explore trigger from Path of Discovery and Sensei's Divining Top, Jimmy can basically guarantee that Glenelendra gets a plus one, plus one counter every time she comes into play, which means it'll counteract the Persist negative one counter. Long and short of it is, Jimmy can kind of counter every non-creature spell we cast for the rest of the game. This is not good for anybody. Yeah, that is not good. When Glenlander ends Battlefield, Path of Discovery will trigger. I will reveal a non-land card on the top of my library, and I will keep Sylvan Library there, and I'll put a plus one, plus one counter on Glen Alendra. And go for it. At this point, I basically have the entire game on lockdown. All right, I'm gonna play Phyrexian Arena. Okay, we've got a little card draw online. Uh, it might be too little too late, but this is really one of the ways I might be able to get back into this game. 
I'm gonna cast Somber Wall Sage. And then I'm gonna cast a new card, Trap Jaw Tyrant. I'm really excited about this new card. At least if I start dealing damage to him, I can start exiling Stum of Jimmy stuff. And then I declare attacks. Yep. I attack Jimmy for three with Aurelia the War Leader. I'll take three. Second attack, I attack you again. I'll take three more. And then I pass turn. Okay, I'm going to untap on my upkeep. I will pay one to top. I'll put these three on top. Reveal the top card of my library with Herald's Horn. It's Kapala, Warden of Waves. And I will put that into my hand. And then scribe with Life Crafters Bestiary. Keep it on top and draw. Too much value. I will take one damage from the Mana Vault. I'll tap two, play Mirror Regery. Explore trigger. So in library again, put a plus one plus one counter on him. So this card with Surge Spanner and Cura's Follower means I can essentially bounce three permanents a turn as long as I cast a Merfolk spell. I'm just putting extra layers of security onto my lock of this game. Um, I will tap the Surge Spanner for blue, pay an extra mana, and I'll bounce the Will Sater back to your hand, Craig. And then play Kopala, Warden of Waves. Trigger the Path of Discovery. Again, Silver Library is on top. Mirror Ragery is going to trigger and untap Surge Spanner. And then I will tap Surge Spanner again for blue and tap another blue. And I will bounce your Summer Old Sage. So Jim is able to bounce at least two of my permanents a turn at this point, which means that I'm never going to catch up. And then I'm just going to go ahead and pass the turn. Okay, I will untap. Draw for Phyrexian Arena, take a damage. I will draw for turn. I will play a Mentor of the Meek. That's gonna trigger Cathar's Crusade, and it gets a plus one, plus one counter, so it's actually a three, three, woo! Don't everybody get too excited now, go ahead. All right, untap, upkeep, draw, declare attacks. Okay. James, five and three. Okay, I'm going to use Cure's Follower to untap Surge Spanner. I'll tap Surge Spanner for blue, add a blue, and I'll bounce the Trap Jaw Tyrant to your hand. And then damage, I'll take three. Second attack, I'll take three. I have a couple of direct damage cards in my deck, and so I'm really paying attention to people's life totals, and they're getting kind of low. I need to get rid of Glen Alendra so I can have a chance to top deck one of those spells and maybe steal this game out of nowhere. It's possible. Second main, I'm gonna cast Aggravated Assault. In response, I will Glen Alendra it. Ah, weak. And then, Glen Alendra is gonna persist back onto the battlefield with a minus one, minus one counter on it. And that's going to trigger the Path of Discovery. Okay, in response to the Explore trigger, mm -hmm. I'm gonna Swords of Plowshares, Glenelendra. Okay, so that will resolve, she will get exiled. Now we'll gain a life. So with Glenelendra off the table, I do have some outs still to win the game. Debt to the Deathless will probably do it. Exsanguinate will at least give me a shot too. This is all given that Jimmy has no other counter spells in his hand, which I'm really hoping he doesn't. And then I'll play Somberwald again and pass turn. Hang on, I'm yes. going to Anguish on Making for five, paying the two extra. Target a Search Spanner. Which is awesome. At least this way my stuff stays on the battlefield. So I'm feeling like we got a shot at this point. I'm feeling like this might actually turn our way. So Surge Spanner's gonna get exiled and you lose three life. Okay, I will untap. I will trigger Herald's Horn on upkeep. I will yeah. reveal Drowner of Secrets and oh. I'll put it into my hand. Oh, a mill card. Then tap Cure's Follower to untap my Mana Vault. You. And I will draw for turn. I got 17, Craig. Josh, three cards in hand, probably out of removal at this point. Even with those two important cards gone, I still have a lot of synergy on my board, so I'm able to generate a ton of value this turn, and I have a plan. I'm going to play Drowner of Secrets. Trigger Miro Ridgery, and I'm going to untap the Cure's Follower. The cast trigger from Life Crasher's Beast Seer is going to trigger. I will pay a green to draw a card. Path of Discovery is going to trigger, revealing Harvest Season at the top. I'll keep it on top. I'll play plus one, plus one counter on Drowner of Secrets. I will now cast Kumena, Tyrant of Araska. Life Crafters B Seria will trigger, I will not draw off of it. I will use Mira's trigger to tap down your Aurelia, Craig. Mm, okay. And then I will explore, revealing Harvest Season again, putting a plus one, plus one counter on Kamena. And then I will cast Triumph of the Hordes, giving everyone plus one, plus one, and trample. <laughs> I will go to combat. Craig, I'm swinging at you with the full team. It's 18 trample, I believe. And I died to infect. So we've had two players knocked out to infect. This is a Craig Blanchett game for sure. <laughs>
Uh, it's actually not good that Craig was taken out here because he was buying me the time I needed to draw through my deck and maybe find a, a way to win. All right, with Craig gone, it's just me and Josh. I just need two attack steps and I think I got the game in the bag. I'll draw for Phyrexian Arena, I'll take a damage. I'll draw for turn. Okay, I didn't draw one of my direct damage spells. I'm gonna be taking a huge hit this next turn. I'm maybe gonna have one more chance to draw those cards I need. Um, I play a land, go ahead. Okay, I'll untap. I will pay one to use the top. Sure, why not? Uh, I will scry with Life Crafters Bestiary and put it on the bottom. I will not reveal anything with Herald's Horn. I'll draw for the turn. Take a damage from the Mana Vault. I will go to combat. And Josh, I will full swing out. I have zero blocks. I okay. take 18. All right. I will tap two and I will play a Sylvan Library. I'll tap three and play Harvest Season. Oh my goodness. And then I will put five basics into play tapped past turn. All right, here we go. So I gotta draw something that directly deals damage to Jimmy. Can I do it? You got this, bro. Mm-hmm. I'll draw for Phyrexian Arena, take a damage. I will draw for turn. No, 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 we didn't draw it. Um, go ahead, Jimmy. Untap, I'm just going to forget all my triggers. Draw a card, combat, swing out. I only have one blocker, he's got way too much power, and that's it. I get punched in the face by a bunch of merfolk. It's like <laughs> Good game, good, good, games. Game, everybody. good, game. good game, everybody. Good game, everybody. Good games. Yes! I did it! I drew lands, I played cards. I was a real magic player today. It feels great. I'm a happy camper. Two people died to infect, that's half the table. That's cool. I think Zakama may go in the books as one of the best Nyak Manners of all time. I actually want to build a Zakama deck myself now. Shh, don't tell Craig. It's always awesome to have Craig back. He's such a fun, dynamic player, and he always brings a new flavor to the table. You know, we've had a lot of awesome guests on the show, and we love doing that, but there is something very special about playing with the people that you get to play with a lot. You really get to enjoy, you know, knowing what they're going to do and laughing about like Craig's going to play poison and infect and aggro, of course, and that's what he always does, but that's one of the reasons we love playing with him. I really just didn't see the infect coming. I wish I would have saved my arcane denial, but I think that's always the case in Commander. You just, you just got to go and you got to see what happens. And that's what I love. I love changing the meta up, making people afraid of things that they weren't afraid of before and seeing how people react and play in those situations. So thanks for coming back, Craig. It's always good to have you. But I gotta be real with you. Vorin class, are you serious? Who put that in a deck? <laughs> Hey, you made it to the end of the episode. Congratulations. And you know what that means. It's time for our giveaway. Thanks to Ultra Pro. You know, they give us all of the product that we use during the show and also tons of extra stuff so that we can give it all away to you. They've been an awesome sponsor. And hey, we've got a lot of really good stuff to give away this time. We've got some sweet Kumena sleeves, deck boxes. I think, although, honestly, you just want these Kumena sleeves. It's the best commander I've ever played, ever. That you've ever played? Ever, in I my think, entire uh, life. I, uh, I, I think Zakama is the best commander of the bunch. I don't know. I think I won that game, so <laughs> that's all Scoreboard. that matters to me. Scoreboard. <laughs> anyway, entering is super simple. If you go to Facebook or Twitter, you can enter twice on Facebook. Find our post on our page sharing this episode. Click the share button and make sure it's shared to your public profile. If you're on Twitter, just tweet out a link to this episode and use the hashtag Game Nights. And we'll be announcing the winners of this contest exactly one week from the release of this episode. So what are you waiting for? Go enter. You want to win this stuff? Go enter. All right. Good luck, everyone. And thank you so much. We're looking forward to an awesome 2018. Thanks to your support. See ya.